Jurassic. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. This is we're going to talk about a couple things. I want to start by comparing mitosis and meiosis, and then I'm going to cover mitosis in somewhat depth. I'll have one video where I go even deeper. And then I want to talk about how the two pair together to form the human life cycle. So let's start with uh, what mitosis is. Real simply, mitosis, you're going to see one round of division where one diploid cell, diploid or 2N, meaning that it has two sets of chromosomes, like the, the cells in your body, your somatic or body cells. We have 46 chromosomes. After mitosis, you're going to have one cell with 46 chromosomes has divided once to form two cells that are also diploid, also having 46 chromosomes. Whereas meiosis, what you see here is you start with one cell with 46 chromosomes. Then you have two rounds of division, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So instead of ending with two cells, you end with four cells. But these four cells are haploid, meaning they only have one set of chromosomes. So your body cells are going to undergo mitosis. Your sex cells are undergo, going to undergo meiosis because sperm and egg cells are the only cells you want that have one set of chromosomes, only 23. So obviously these two work together to form the human life cycle. Let's go ahead and take a look at that here. So let's start with you as a zygote. You're a fertilized egg. For about, one, for about 30 minutes, you were a single cell, right? This third fertilized egg. Then you were two, four, eight, 16. You get the point. So cell division and mitosis turned you into a baby that had a few trillion cells, and you continue to grow and to develop until you're an adult that's made of somewhere around 37.2 trillion cells. But once you're these 37.2 trillion cells, you're not done. You're still maintaining cells all the time. Every time cells die, they're going to be replaced. Skin cells, cells lining your GI tract, hair cells, whatever. So cell division and mitosis is what got you to the somatic body cells that you're made of, these 37.2 trillion, give or take, more with me. Um, but then you reach puberty, and then meiosis kicks in. So then you, let's say you're the man here on the left, you're going to be producing the male gametes, the sperm, or if you're the woman on the right, you're going to be producing the female gametes, the egg. So meiosis is going to be where you produce sex cells, and then your sperm or your egg is going to find its counterpart, and now we have a fertilized egg or a zygote again, and the next generation, so your offspring spring, start as a single cell, become fully formed adults, produce, uh, use meiosis to produce sex cells to form the next generation, etc. So I like to call that the, the human life cycle, which is the combination of a whole lot of mitosis and then enough meiosis to produce your offspring, right? I have one, one biological child. So all the sperm my body's made of only needed one, right? And my wife needed the one egg. So that's going to be the human life cycle. Now let's go back and let's look a little bit more deeper into mitosis because meiosis is important, but we don't talk about that much until the last chapter together when we talk about the male and female reproductive tracts. So mitosis is going to be the key right now. So I will go into more detail, but I'm going to give you the awesome 10,000 foot view, which is going to have most of the important information you need. So here we see the cell life cycle. First thing I want you to note, this entire thing is not mitosis. Mitosis is just there in the middle. They call it PMAT, so we'll come back to that. But the cell life cycle starts with interphase. Interphase is, for the average cell, it's 90% of the cell's time. It's an interphase. Think about, uh, you don't spend all of your time reproducing. You spend most of the time doing your job, whatever it might be. So about 90% of a typical cell's life cycle or cell cycle is going to be an interphase. Some cells are going to stay in interphase forever, cells that don't divide, think, uh, ne uh, neurons, these kind of things. Other cells like stem cells or really rapidly dividing cells, they're going to be in interphase for a short period of time and then they're going to move on and divide again and divide again. So not all cells are in interphase all the time, but the typical cell is going to be in interphase about 90% of the time. So what's happening during interphase? The cell is doing its job. If it's a liver cell, it's making stuff, detoxifying, whatever. So interphase is when a cell is doing its job. It's not focusing on division, but it is preparing for division. So during interphase, you're going to see the replication of DNA and organelles. So during interphase, the cell is not started to divide, but it is preparing to divide. All right, so I already mentioned some cells never leave interphase, cells that don't divide, other cells aren't there very long. So that's interphase. Then we go into mitosis. So when I say mitosis, you probably think the division of body cells, and that's fine. But the actual definition of mitosis is the division of the nucleus. This is why in microbiology, we don't talk about mitosis because bacteria don't don't have a nucleus. We call it binary fission there. So here we see mitosis or PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase or telophase. So real quick, during prophase, the nucleus disappears. Now, so you have all your genetic material, the chromatin, the, the DNA has, has clumped together to form chromosomes, and the, and the nucleus has disappeared. So that's going to be prophase. During metaphase, the chromosomes line up at the equator of the cell or the metaphase plate. 
During anaphase, the chromosomes are pulled apart into two piles. During telophase or telophase, telophase two new nuclei form. So now you have that one egg with two yolks. You have one cell with two nuclei. Then we end the cell cycle with cytokinesis, which is where the one cell actually splits into two. Okay, so we'll cover that in more detail later, but that is uh, differences between mitosis and meiosis, a quick overview here of mitosis, and then how the two fit into the human life cycle. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.